a pleasure to be here. I'm just delighted that we were able to work this out. Okay, sound check. Make sure I can do that. So this is actually a, a new presentation that I put together in the last few days. And um, I love your feedback, but also it was hard to edit. <laughs> there's so many topics, there's so much going on at W3C. My hope is to really do three things tonight. One is to share some information about what is new, what's going on with the web and what we're doing at W3C to advance uh, our mission of leading the web to its full potential. Uh, the second is to really get your input to say, you know, what is interesting for you? What are some of the challenges that you're seeing and also, what's the Australian perspective? What are some of the things that need to happen here to engage the developer community on a more sustaining basis? And hopefully at the end, I'd also like to acknowledge and introduce my colleague, Dr. Priscilla Khan-John, who is business development for W3C Australia, uh, based at ANU in Canberra. So those are sort of the three objectives. So let's uh, get going. Uh, obviously, the web has grown. This is just a Wikipedia slide showing the very dark blue and blue with Australia being very high penetration of the web over the last uh, 28 years and acknowledging that Australia has really made a big commitment to uh, increasing access in many communities across Australia through the, the broadband network, whether you agree with all the implementation or not, but we won't go there. <laughs> We're meeting with someone from formerly with Telstra yesterday was a little disgruntled. <laughs> Um, and of course, what's new? Well, last week, we're all very proud that our uh, manager, our boss, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, was awarded the Turing Prize, the Turing Award, uh, after 28 years for inventing the web and the associated protocols. So yay, Tim. And the web turned 28 in 2017. Hard to believe. Some of you are probably thinking, Oh, I was really young back then, <laughs> 28 years ago, and others of others are saying, oh, I remember it. <laughs> so it depends on your perspective. But on this anniversary, Tim actually published a very interesting blog talking about three challenges that he's very concerned about for the web, uh, certainly privacy and security, and also data, and the verification. This particular headline picked up the fake news. Um, we do have a new technology called Web Annotations that's just been published. It's a recommendation, and it is, I think, going to help alleviate some of the fake news syndrome where you can actually validate scientific information. You can annotate with sources, web content, so check out Web Annotations. So the web, you know, 28 years old, I just wanted to put on the, the business marketing hat, maybe a quick down memory lane, what did that look like in 1996? Again, looking at sort of the uh, intro curve and, and where are we on the web exactly? So those of us who were around in 1996, <laughs> yeah, remember, you know, the web was this like really crude looking document and some of us put up some of those crude looking sites. Yeah. <laughs> and then we advanced e-commerce. Remember the late 90s and early 2000s? It was like nuts. I was working at Leo Burnett at the time in technology marketing in Boston. And people would come to us and they were throwing, these VCs were throwing millions of dollars at these agencies and saying, I want to go from zero to brand in 60 days. Like, what do you do vaporware most of the time? <laughs> but occasionally we had some good companies. I was able to participate in the launch of Akamai and worked on Alaire and a whole bunch of other brands, and that was pretty cool. So I do remember the e-commerce craze pretty well. And now, of course, uh, today, rich interactivity, and we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. So it's a little bit of what I wanted to talk to you about today. And the importance of standards, of course. The reason that we now have the mobile phone working, the reason we have web and TV working, is because of standards that we're doing at W3C with the community, with people like yourselves who are contributing to the advancement of the web. So there's several areas that I'm hoping to just kind of give a, a gloss over. I, I picked a few. First of all, the core web infrastructure, you know, the basic technologies that we're looking at as the core, HTML, CSS, uh, particularly also the, the horizontal reviews we do for accessibility, internationalization, and security. So those are ongoing areas that we're always doing at W3C. Uh, I just wanted to highlight. Then we're going to talk briefly about Web of Things. Um, some new areas emerging for uh, us coming up is Web VR, 
web payments, and also publishing is a, a fairly new area. So those are some of the topics I just wanted to cover. There's so many more. Uh, we do a huge amount of work at W3C. It's kind of hard to, to pick and choose. So if there are other topics. We can talk about them uh, a little bit later. Okay, so just here with uh, HTML5 uh, and CSS, so obviously everyone in this room knows it is the cornerstone of the open web platform. We're continuing to advance it with web application platform, working on um, media extensions, uh, just, just a lot of work is, is going on uh, continuing in HTML. And also bugs, you know, just continuing to look at that. And we invite you to uh, look at that work and participate in it if you're able to. Security, though, is really a big area. We've made this a major priority, and we've launched a number of groups this year, uh, in the past year. Uh, web application security uh, is doing a lot of modules for more secure web. Web authentication has just become a recommendation. And we also, with the FIDO Alliance bringing, um, uh, the, I'm sorry, web authentication in the browser is a new work that we're doing with the FIDO Alliance. So we're, again, we're trying to make passwords a thing of the past and have better security for the web. Oh. But there's still some areas that we're doing in task forces and looking at new areas. So besides the core open web platform, Web of Things has security challenges. Uh, web and Automotive, we have initiative there with a task force looking at Web and Automotive. And Web Payments also is looking at security. So you may remember reading in uh, Wired magazine uh, about the, the famous Jeep hack and literally the guy's car being taken over. So you know these are things that that task force is, is looking at in automotive. Vince Cerf a couple years ago was at a seminar and you know Vince Cerf is saying I'm terrified of IOT. You know we have a problem. <laughs> so. So I want to talk a little bit about what we're doing not so much from security standpoint on IOT but how we're seeing IoT being a web application area. So what is IoT? What's the Internet of Things? Well, obviously, you know, the connectivity layer is the Internet and various devices, various methods for connecting. But the web being the application layer is where we're focusing. And so we see the web of things as being very much like the browser was to the original web as being that services layer of bringing new applications on top of the data that's being provided by the internet layer connectivity. So, you know, right now we're in sort of the usual phase of proprietary uh, individual companies are doing individual devices, but they only stay in their silos. So whether it's the Google silo or Amazon silo, you know, for a home device, but we do see the opportunity through standards to broaden that. We also see in the B2B space actually more traction than in the um, home consumer home space. And that's because it's just such a huge market and so many people in the supply chain want interactivity of their data. Um, so this is the area that we're going to be focusing more on. So again, it's going to, even though there's many, many different um, organizations that are working on IoT by industry and by device type, by protocol type, we're really focused on the, the web application layer. So what are some of the areas? We're primarily looking at the manufacturing and also connected cars. So being in the land of Oz, I'm asking the question, is this really you know, a fantasy here? Is How long is it going to take? Also thinking about the product life cycle. Um, and smart cities, Barcelona is a smart city. They're looking at a lot of different IoT things. So what we're focusing on with the Web of Things initiative is developing the core metadata vocabularies, the thing descriptions for the generic state of a thing. We're not looking at each vertical because we feel like different industry groups can do that. So for example, I'm going to actually step away for a minute and look at this box here. So this is uh, something that uh, a colleague at the, in Europe has done. He's doing a European project with a number of the um, uh, automotive companies. And they're trying to create, it, it's very early research, they're trying to create connected 
car situation with sensors, three different sensors, the data generation, and the software is using semantic web technologies uh, to describe in a consistent way what those things sensor devices are. And they're putting that into the software. There is a demo, um, I'm not gonna show it, it's kind of long, it's a little bit rough, but it's embedded in the presentation so you can go back and take a look at it. But they were successful in being able to have the car with the onboard unit, um, with the sensors, going by then another sensing unit on the road and being able to generate the data. And um, so they're very encouraged, but it took eight months just to do this little demo. And I said, you know, what do you think is sort of the timeline to get there? He said, oh, we're 10 years out. So, you know, when you see these things, oh, we're going to be doing driving connected cars and connected cities, it's a ways away. And we all need to work together. This is a huge amount of work that needs to be done. So if this is an area of interest, you know, please talk to me afterwards and I'll connect you with some of the folks uh, within, a, within that community of uh, IoT. So we're going to skip over that one. Um, there are two different uh, activities in the web of things. An interest group at W3C looks at the requirements and the use cases. And a working group is more narrowly focused and chartered to do the standards. So the working group will be working on the metadata vocabularies. They also do plug fests around the world. I don't think they've had one here in Australia, but I'll ask and see if uh, that might be an interesting one uh, to do. But they usually do plug fast, and there's very active community pages for you to take a look at as well. Just a smattering of the companies involved. But we need everybody's input. And again, kind of coming full circle, there's questions about you know, the technology itself. There are some companies that would prefer uh, different approaches and what's going to be better for web developers. How do we make it modularized and easy to use? There's just so many questions there. And of course, you know, security issues still to be, uh, to be looked at too. So next, I want to talk a little bit about uh, an emerging area that uh, has not yet been standardized, but we're moving in that direction, and that's web and VR, virtual reality. So last October, we had a workshop of over 100 people in uh, San Jose, and this came out of a community group at W3C. And they really want to, they were looking to see what are the two or three things they want to standardize, particularly 360 view is, is one thing that came out of it. Now the links here, um, there's a YouTube video from which I grabbed this screenshot that you can go watch on the left, and uh, the workshop report for you to read also, so it's pretty detailed information. And right now, um, you can join the community group. Community groups at W3C are free. So just go on, any five people can start a community group. And uh, this one's pretty active. It has, I think, well over 100 people in it. Uh, so if VR is of interest to you, um, you know, go ahead and join it. We're also in the process of actually chartering work. So this is also a public comment time once they publish a draft charter, take a look and say, oh, you know, you missed this aspect, or I really think, you know, um, I'd like to see you focus or prioritize on that. So there's, we certainly invite comment. So the next area is web payments. This actually is moving along. We have both an interest group and a working group. The working group is working on an API and uh, just taking a look at, you know, Australia is everywhere, e-commerce and mobile has just been driving it, but the abandonment rates uh, on mobile have been very high. So that's why the community came together in FinTech and the merchant community and said, you know, we really need to have uh, uh, a better solution because it's just way too complicated, particularly on mobile. And think about other new devices, you know, television, auto, we're talking, the web payments group is speaking with the auto group about toll paying, about parking lot paying, et cetera, those use cases. So uh, earlier tonight we heard the importance uh, of the customer experience. I mean, that's our new reality today. And uh, that's why we're, we're doing this API too. This really was community driven that said this is time to do it. 
So again, there's a whole wonderful presentation that my colleague Ian Jacobs has put together at this link below that kind of takes you through a scenario of today, what's a web payment online experience like four or five steps, and tomorrow where we see a very simple buy button with the API negotiating back, I mean API in the browser negotiating back with the payment system, um, the payment provider as well as the payment uh, the credit card or whatever, your bank, whatever it is, and they're even talking about maybe closing that loop with then a confirmation receipt as part of that. So there's a huge amount of really great information there uh, to take a look at. They also expect to be doing a pretty robust campaign reaching out to the developer community about how to use this. So again, feedback welcome uh, from the community. And we're also meeting with certain banks in uh, Australia and other e-commerce companies uh, this uh, the next couple weeks. So uh, the last area is uh, publishing. So the web um, again. There's a this is a YouTube video of a couple of colleagues that spoke recently at the EPUB Summit in Brussels, and it's a good video that will uh, take you through a couple different presentations. But you know, the web started as a publishing medium, uh, publishing documents, and yet. 28 years ago, it really wasn't ready for uh, prime time from the perspective of a traditional publisher like Penguin Random House, for example. Uh, they kind of scoffed at it and said, well, wait a minute, you know, this, this doesn't do anything. They were, this is an art. This is a craft of wonderful curation of content, wonderful curation of typography, et cetera. So, um, but we've come a long way since those days. And what we have done is we've combined with an organization called the International Digital Publishing Forum. And they're the standards body that created the EPUB. And EPUB is uh, based on HTML and CSS and uh, also has accessibility now. And um, we are now continuing the development of EPUB 3 at uh, W3C, and we're also looking at new work in quasi-EPUB 4 or really publishing on the web for any kind of publishing. How do we make that experience better, whether it's from the fonts, from chapters, from online, offline states? So this is a rich new area of work that we're going to be starting. So the goal is to be able to read the web like a book, read the book like a web. I mean, it will be a seamless experience. There is a community group that we formed for EPUB. So if you're interested in publishing and contributing to uh, EPUB development, technical work will be going on there. Some of the priorities and the strategy for the future of publishing is in a new business group at W3C. This one does have a small fee associated with it if you're interested, but it does allow for an individual, small company, or a large company to participate in the future and strategy. And they also will be giving some direction to the EPUB community group. And then finally, we're in the drafting phase of this new working group charter for publishing um, on the web. And again, very exciting new work where we have many, many new companies joining from scholarly publishing, magazine publishing, uh, traditional book publishing, educational publishers, uh, even training. So a very rich new area at W3C. So that's kind of a quick survey. I wanted to allow uh, enough time to get some feedback find out from you what's, what is the scene here in Melbourne. This is also listen and learn for myself and my colleague Priscilla. Uh, what messages do you want me to take back to W3C? What's working for you? What's not working uh, for you from you know, interacting with W3C? And um, the W3C office is now in Australia. We have a can at Canberra at ANU and maybe have Priscilla just come up and say a few words about uh, what they're doing and then we'll have some dialogue. So thank you. Get back.